Fatigue testing is one of the most requested services at Accutech. Not surprisingly, when clients come to us with fatigue testing requests, there are many commonly asked questions that we hear. Therefore, in an effort to help our clients better understand the services we provide to them, we've prepared a series of videos to address many of these questions. So let's jump right in with this week's video topic, Fatigue Testing, Frequently Asked Questions. One of the most commonly asked questions we as project engineers receive has to do with the difference between high cycle and low cycle fatigue. I've heard of high and low cycle fatigue. Can you explain the difference? High cycle fatigue tests are tests that generally run 100,000 or more cycles, while low cycle fatigue tests are usually 100,000 or less cycles. Both high and low cycle fatigue tests are widely used across the industry. However, there are some specific instances when running a low cycle fatigue test or high cycle fatigue test are recommended or necessary. That's right, Jenna. Low cycle fatigue tests are more commonly used for materials in an application where stress levels are extremely high and plastic deformation can often occur as a result of fatigue stresses. In contrast, however, high cycle fatigue is used for materials that experience stress levels that are relatively low and where deformation, a change in shape or size of an object as a result of an applied force is primarily elastic in nature. The principal distinction between high cycle fatigue and low cycle fatigue is the region of the stress strain curve where the repetitive application of load and resultant deformation or strain is taking place. Due to material behavior at low stresses versus high stresses, both methods are performed using different control methods. Low cycle fatigue is performed using the strain control method, where a specific magnitude of strain is applied to the test specimen per cycle. Traditional high cycle fatigue is stress controlled, meaning a constant load is applied throughout the duration of the test. This leads us to our second most commonly asked question, what other fatigue testing methods are available? The most common type of cyclic loading a specimen can be subjected to is axial. This is where the test specimen is taken from tension to compression repeatedly until failure. In addition to the traditional axial high cycle and low cycle fatigue, flexural or torsional stresses may be applied repeatedly until point of failure. That's right, Jenna. In general, axial is the most popular method for traditional fatigue studies. Rotating beam is also a very useful method for generating high cycle fatigue runs in short intervals of time. Torsional, shear, and flexural methods are mainly geared toward materials that are susceptible to specific stresses. A material expected to see high concentrations of oscillating torques, for example, would most likely benefit from a torsional fatigue study. Thanks, Kevin. Also keep in mind that by carefully studying your material application, you can determine which method will give you the most relevant and useful results. What is an R ratio in fatigue testing? Simply put, the R ratio is representative of the loading profile for a given test. An R value of negative 1 and an R value of 0 are two common reference test conditions used for obtaining fatigue properties. An R value of negative 1 is a fully reversed loading condition where the specimen is cycled to the same stress and tension and compression. An R value of 0 is a tensile fatigue test where a specimen is cycled from maximum tensile stress to zero stress repeatedly. That's right, Jenna. Two of the most common R ratios are negative one and zero. An R ratio of negative one, also called fully reversed, would mean that the specimen is being tested in tension and compression. An example of an R ratio of negative one would be a minimum stress of negative 100 and a maximum stress of 100. An R ratio of zero indicates that a specimen is being loaded to its max stress and completely unloaded. So zero is the minimum stress and 100 is the maximum stress. Our final question today is how do I determine test frequency? Most fatigue tests are typically performed between 5 and 50 hertz, or cycles per second, depending on the application and materials being tested. In general, metallic materials can be tested at high frequencies without significant effect from heat or excessive strain rate. Plastics or composites, on the other hand, are much more strain rate dependent, and results obtained during high frequency testing may be compromised due to these characteristics. In addition, products such as medical devices must be tested at even lower frequencies in accordance with applicable ASTM standards. 
We hope you enjoyed learning more about some of the most common fatigue testing questions. In our next video, we will address some common questions revolving around the generation of fatigue curves. In the meantime, please reach out to our team with any testing questions you may have. Thank you.